What we have here is a warehouse superstructure. Part of it, it's a shallow relief building, and this is made out of gator board, just to give us the interior stability and support for these prints that are going to outside of them. And that's kind of a roofing print there. But as you can see, I have some window reliefs and a loading dock door relief, and I can have some lights in here. And I'll show you where this is gonna go. Right over there. Now, the building in the backdrop, that's kind of like the main building. That's going to serve as like the main building of this, whatever it is, sawmill, furniture company, I don't know, whatever, spruce timber company. But this is a print that I put on cardboard just to see if the size fit in this area, and I really like it. Oh, what's this? That's another turnout, and I think there may be some changes coming. And with that, I want to thank Scott Nichols, good friend. He helps run the Great Scale Model Train Show in Timonium, Maryland. And I believe this year it's February 4th and 5th. Don't quote me on that. It is definitely in February. But Scott was kind enough to bring me four of these turnouts. He had them in his stock and he dropped them off. He comes by every now and then to pick up backdrops. Thank you, Scott. But what I'm thinking of is that big warehouse is going to go here. The superstructure that you saw. And I am thinking of adding another industry over this way. Now, all this in the backdrop, that could be what's on the other side of an industry, or it could be what's on this side of an industry. So, really, I'm just playing around with what I want to do. But I'm thinking this would have a track come in here and just cram this with, just pack it with excitement, right? Excitement here at the layout. More industries means more fun, more switching opportunities. So I can't lie, I have been switching a little bit on the layout here just to see how it operates. And it runs really nice. It really does, especially with those turnouts and the touch toggles running the tortoise switch machines. But if I do put that turnout in over there, I can add another touch toggle right here. I have the controller up under there. So let's see how this works out. I know that, that furnace over there in that, in that room there makes a lot of noise. Sorry about that. This being the front piece is going to be based right there on there with that. And then I can cut the relief for the door. Then, you know, once I get it done, I can I can put some trim and corner trim and, you know, gutters and all kinds of things like that. But I want to see if I can get this thing together, make it look good before I start snipping that layout apart. Because this is the inside of the warehouse and it's not going to be seen, I'm not really worried about how I glue this together. But I am going to use this stuff. Let me show you something. Yep, everybody asks what I use to glue most of the stuff on the layout together, and it, and it is this stuff. And I keep a large stockpile, not only here, but at the modeling desk, on the carts, sometimes in my pocket. I had some weight on that, and well, that's drying. That's going to go right in like that. So all these supports are going to fit kind of in this fashion here like this and that'll hold the roof on and all that stuff and remember this is the inside of it and it's this is way back in there and i'm not really that worried about it in the front i might put some details and things like that where you can get a nice camera shot a bunch of machines and tools and junk and stuff see inside this one building there's a lot of detail items in there that i can take out of there Move over to the new layout. Same thing with this. I have a box full of stuff here. Bunch of stuff in there. So there's lots of stuff to start with. All right, that's not bad. Get the window holes cut out. And all that's going to have trim around it. Dock door there will trim that up, make it look nice. This is just the basic stuff, and I want to get it on there. sometimes I 
That was easy. It was all about 10, 15 minutes. Got it glued down, got the hole drilled for the switch machine. Let that dry. I have all the pieces cut and laid. I got some ties laid. Track's not secure over there. I went ahead and used flex track here to save some time. It'll be all right. I extended this track a little bit just to give a little lead room. If the car doesn't clear, I don't want to get too tight if it rolls or something. So I have this siding in here now. I gotta spike the track down and straighten it up. Still drying. But it looks neat. I'm gonna see how much I can get done here in the next hour. All right, there it is, not bad for an afternoon. Well, a couple hours. Turnout is in. It's not uh, wired yet. Switch machine's not in there yet. But the industry is in there. And I'm not saying that's staying. And what do I mean it's not staying? I may put a building in front of that, make it look like the back of that building or something like that. Because obviously I don't want to dock there and I didn't think it through in the beginning. Another thing is we have some close clearance here. And now that door might be a little offset, might be a little tight. I may have to do a little surgery to this building. I was telling you guys in the previous video that I have to work in spurts. And now it's after five o'clock, the door is locked. And I was able to get this done. Once I laid the track and spiked down the other sections there, it went pretty quick. But now we have the, the uh, what is it? Come on. The rotary dumper. We have an industry here. We have an industry here, an industry here, and an industry there. So five industries on this side of the layout now. And I don't think it's going to be too crowded, but I like a very crowded scenic area where there's a lot of stuff going on and a lot of stuff to look at. And I like that I did that in such a small space. So up next, I'll get this track all cleaned up. I'll get that building squared away, at least as far as where it fits properly. And then I'll think about what the siding is going to be for over here, what this industry is going to be. Part of me thinks that it should be a grain offload or a feed offload, something like that, because it's already kind of set up that way, at least as far as the, the backdrop goes. But I did see this one picture, and I think I think I threw it away. I, I found it online of this, I don't know if it was a milk plant or something like that, but it was really, really nice. It was a kind of a concrete building with a dock, and that might fit in there just nice, but it's going to take some thinking here. So I better do go do some thinking. That's a tractor I had on the old spruce layout. What's neat about that is the feed transload up here near where we live actually uses a tractor with a chain to spot the cars and, and move them around the little tiny yard they have there. No kidding, it's really interesting to see one of those old tractors pull those cars around. Of course, here we only have one track, so it wouldn't be much of anything unless they had, say, there was two cars came in and he has to move them to the spot location you know the dump that would be under the track fictitiously here maybe that's an idea what do you think what would look good in that spot 